tutorial we're going to have a look at some of the repair tools that Photoshop has uh, specifically the, the healing tools and also the stamp tools. I'm going to jump straight into this. I'm going to duplicate this image. Uh, one of the reasons for doing that, if I do absolutely mess this up, I will have the backup of the original. I'm going to turn the background one off in case I erase that way I can see any repairs below that. Let's zoom in on this and have a look. We've got a few rust marks and other little blemishes and stuff like that and we can potentially think about repairing some of these elements. Now let's have a look at the very first tool which is the spot healing tool. The shortcut is J. There are some options up the top here that we need to be aware of. We can adjust the brush type, size, hardness, spacing, even the angle of that if we wish. Um, so be aware of that if you want a nice soft brush to do gradual blending. I usually recommend that. You can also have turn on for pressure for size. Though I actually prefer to have that turned off. I feel that so sometimes when you're trying to do a, a specific brush width and it gets bigger and smaller, it's a bit annoying. Um, be aware of this. Content aware, create texture proximity match um, and also sample all layers is going to allow us to create a new layer or work on a separate layer and it's just going to be taking into consideration all the layers below or you can have a specific for that layer that you are on. Now, quick thing with pro uh, content aware and proximity match, um, the way that this, this tool works is literally you just paint over the area that you want to repair and you can see that's done a reasonable job. I've got this on content aware which means it's kind of looking at what that object is. So, you know, test around with this. Let's try the headlights, see what that does and you know we got some funky things happening there. Proximity match is what that's going to do is it's going to look at the object and it's going to look at the area specifically around it. So as you can see it hasn't really worked that well for this because the proximity around this has this curvature from the wheel hub. So um, that's you know hasn't really worked for us and we can try just you know over and over again and it's just going to get messy and messier. So be aware of that uh, proximity match is going to work really well for things like over here where it's you know it's going to have little tiny little sections that we can potentially fix but besides that content aware is, is usually going to have a more of an idea so these little scratches it's going to work great for um, and little indents and stuff and you can zoom in and really get finicky with this sort of thing um, but otherwise content aware is going to do a pretty damn good job of, of that um, as we paint around that and get rid of that and it's like okay cool um, so it uses some very complex algorithms the next one down is the actual healing brush and the the advantage of this one I'm actually going to step back and bring this thing back is that you actually get an option of looking at a specific area so I can actually look at this door which is relatively clean I can press alt to bring up my targeting system and I can use that as a sampling area and as I paint over this you can hopefully see that little cross so it's going to sample from this area so if you've got a nice clean area that can really help you out and I can press alt and resample it and then remove that and start cleaning up other areas now as I get hit the seam here if I don't want to include that seam what I might want to do is jump into my lasso tool and I'm just going to define where that seam is so as I paint near it it's not going to paint over it so I don't want to paint on the on the um, the step here either. I don't want to t paint on these hin this hinge up here. So I'm going to potentially create a, a, a selection area around there. Now I'm not going to spend too much time removing the handle and stuff like that. But now what I can do is jump back into there and go right. I'm going to Alt select in here, and I'm going to start painting over this. And it's only going to paint within that selection area. Now you can get some weird ghosting things happening um, and that's because we've got a dark area and the other area as well. So that's really good um, and what you're going to do is it's going to allow you to sample from one area to the other. I do want to talk about aligned a little bit so I'm actually going to deselect that and with aligned a tick so I'm going to go for this Volkswagen symbol and move that in here and as you can see what it does is it does a blend of the two layers and it can paint that around and it's going to try and blend those two together. Now if I move my cursor up here and start painting you can see what it's actually doing is it's just continuing on from where I first sampled which was in the middle of that Volkswagen symbol. 
So that's where Align comes in. If I untick the Aligned, let's sample again where that Volkswagen is, and I can just paint that. And now if I move somewhere else and click, it's going to repaint and repaint. Now that's actually really useful if you're doing things like um, adding flowers or potentially you know, a repetitive pattern that you're going to add in a lot of places. So, and as you can see, as I paint in different areas, it's going to blend accordingly to that background. So the heel tool does that. It looks at both the sample area and what you are painting on. Once again, if you want to do this on a blank layer, you can. The next tool, you cannot. The patch tool it does not have the option for a blank layer. So you literally have to use it on an existing layer and only on a single layer. Um, this tool actually works really well and what it allows you to do is you can draw with a lasso or you can jump into a lasso tool or a selection tool, whatever tool that is and I'm just using a lasso tool in this case um, to select this light for example. Then I'm going to go to the patch tool there's a choice of source and destination and then I'm going to actually start moving this around until I can find a location that's going to work for me. Now it's probably going to be close to here which has already got a dent on it but let's see how that works and that's kind of working but it's got some weird stuff so I can re-move and rejig it. So it does sort of really start messing up when you start getting to areas where you've got this um, you know dark areas and, and stuff that don't quite match but it's kind of cool because you can just sort of circle around things and go all right, this little this little thing here let's find an area that's going to match that texture wise and color wise and you can just sort of build it up for there so it usually does a pretty good job and it is one of my favorite ones to do now I'm going to step that back because I actually want to get this little um, get this headlight back now there is another thing you can do as well is you can do the opposite of that so with this headlight select I'm going to switch from source to destination and now what I can actually do is drag that over and put it onto another area and what that's going to do is it's going to blend that in with that area. Let's move it again, let's place it over the trees and you can see it kind of gets that image and it blends it in between the two of it so it's an extremely powerful tool for doing that. Um, the next one down is the content aware move tool. Now this one is more specific to a, a kind of uh, just a general object um, but let's see if we can find something that's going to work for that and what I'm going to probably do is um, I'm just going to actually I'm going to use something I don't usually use much which is the magnetic lasso tool but I'm just doing a rough selection anyway and I'm going to zip that around and I'm going to switch that to a standard lasso tool. I'm just going to grab this tire area and let's go to our move tool so what our move tool is going to allow us to do is grab that and move it elsewhere let's actually try move it here uh, and then it's going to give me the option to transform now this is, can be a little hit and miss but after a while you do get an idea of what it's going to do so it's going to try and move that selection and fit it in place but it, then it's also going to try and remove it from where it started so I'm just going to hit enter it's probably going to be really weird though yep and you can see it's kind of it's trying to guess from the information so this isn't a really fantastic example for something like this a good example could be um, a person so let's open up this image for example and let's grab this character here and I'm just gonna zip around her really quickly with the content aware move tool and again you can get quite precise with this with using other tools and then I'm gonna move her over here and let's let's scale her up just to make life interesting see how that works and apply and it's going to try and fit her in to the background as you see I haven't done a really good cutout and then it's going to try and make her disappear so you know that already that's kind of looking which looks like kind of a giant um, she's missing the shadow obviously but um, it is quite a handy little tool to use um, is the content move tool but it depends what it is really alright next one so I'm actually going to delete that layer let's duplicate the background again um, stepping out from there is the stamp tool shortcut is S for clone stamp there's a pattern stamp tool not much use for us for most stuff that we're going to use so I'm just going to stick with the clone stamp and most of this is basically based on the brush again and once again I usually recommend using a soft round pressure opacity brush so you can blend stuff in gradually and the big options that we got here are sample layers so if you're using 
layers above and you want to view all of them um, or have them influence it, have sample layers on, or you can have current and below or current layers. But for now, I'm going to create a blank layer because I can and use all layers so it's going to sample that below. Um, the other one is aligned, so that is an important one. And what this does is you press Alt to bring up your targeting system and you target an area and then you can brush over and it's going to literally sample from that area. So let's say for example I want to clean up, uh, I want to remove this this seam uh, along this bonnet. Well what I can do is I can adjust my brush size because I don't want it to be too big for this. Um, I'm going to press Alt to bring up my targeting system. I'm going to click here, I'm going to move down, let's zoom in actually so we can see a bit better. So Alt to bring up my target, click in there and I'm going to move down to this area and as I paint you can see it's going to take a literal paint of that area and it's going to and you can see as I get to this rust area it's going to start sampling that so one of the best practices for this is to actually start you know cleaning up your area to start with and do play around with the opacity if you want to blend this in more softly you can either use opacity on your brush and then you know I, I keep sampling it keep sampling and moving it around now the advantage of this is it does have a lot of control because you are literally stamping from one place to the other whereas the heel tool is taking a composite of the two and combining them. So if I grab something like this door handle for example and press alt and I can start painting it and it's literally going to give me that entire door handle.